Hey everyone, welcome back to another video about how to get started with Seller Snap's Amazon AI repricer. In this video today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to take deep dives into your data in order to answer the important questions about your store. There's a few different points throughout the platform that we're going to be covering today in order to answer those questions. The first is going to be the filtering. We're also going to look at all the columns available, and then I'm going to show you some neat tips and tricks to dive in on a really granular level for each one of your listings. So once you're logged into the Seller Snap platform, you'll go ahead and navigate to the listings table, which looks a little something like this. You'll notice that we have the different aggregations of data at the top based on all of the listings that you see down here at the bottom below the fold. And so the really cool thing about this section of the platform is as you learn how to slice and dice the data, all your aggregations of data will change at the top. So for example, if I take this SKU and I drop it into my search button here, I will get just the data for that specific SKU, which which I can go ahead and clear once I am done. The very first thing I want to go over today has to do with the filtering function. You'll notice that halfway down the page on the left hand side next to the search bar, I can click on filters and I have a whole slew of items that I can use to slice and dice my data again to answer those very important questions about this store. I might look at something like show me items where repricing is on, that I am in between my min and max price that is currently in stock. From there, I can go ahead and click and apply filters, and I can see that out of the 72 items I had before, I currently have 17. And then I can make certain decisions on those listings based on what I feel is best for my business. And so because there's so many filters here, I'm not gonna go through all of them today, but I do suggest you come in and play around and get to know the system in order to, again, answer those important questions. And if you have any questions about how to use the filters better, please feel free to reach out to our team so they can help build those filters for you. And once you've built those filters, you can always go ahead and save them as a preset. So when you come back to SellerSnap each and every time, you can simply go straight to the preset that's in this drop down menu at the top of your screen. The next thing I'd like to go over today has to do with all the columns. You'll notice when you scroll down into the listings table that there are a ton of columns here that you can use um, to get a better idea of each one of those listings. So we see everything from total revenue to ordered items, our average selling price, and some slightly more granular data like um, our total revenue diff. And so something that's important to know when you're reading this data is what do these numbers mean? So just like at the top of the screen, we have the different aggregations of data based on date range. So you'll notice that we are able to look at a seven to 30 day date range along with custom. And so dependent on whatever date range we're looking at, you can look at the, the top level that looks at the current date range. And then the bottom one is the previous. So here on this specific item, we had $5,400 in the current seven day period. And the seven day period between that was a, was $2,400, which led to a total revenue difference of $2,900 here, which you can see in this next column. And so all of the columns work in the same way. When you see those errors at the top is the current period and the bottom is the previous period. And then you could see the percentage change so you can understand am I performing better or worse in this given time period. In addition to the columns that show up when you log into the platform, there are a bunch of hidden columns. And so the way that you would access those hidden columns is by clicking on the columns button on the right side of the screen, and you'll see that there's visible and hidden. The visible columns are ordered from um, top to bottom, which is similar to the left to right functionality. So you'll notice that Invisible, Title, Repricing, Fulfillment are the first three columns on the left side of my table. I can always move those columns around the best way I see fit in order to get the best feel for, for my business, for my platform based on my specific use case. I also want to look at the hidden columns on the left-hand side, and I want to be able to add the columns that, again, make sense for what I'm working on right now. You can always adjust these columns based on what you're working on today. So today, let's say I'm working on my items that have high inventory age. So what I can do is I can go to the hidden section of the column, find those listings, and I'll highlight them, and then I'll move simply move them to visible. From there, I can move them up and down in these columns in order to put them in the right place to help with my specific workflow. From there, once I click apply changes, they'll end up in my listings table and then I can make specific decisions based on those data points. So this is a little bit more about how column works. Sometimes columns 
are available to only our premium subscription uh, versus our standard and our accelerator models. If you have any questions about columns that may or may not be visible to you, you can always reach out to our support team who will help clear up anything that you may have. The last part about diving deeper into the store that I want to go over today is how to get a little bit more granular on a single listing. Just like the different aggregations of the data at the top, what I can do is scroll down to my title column and click on the edit listings window, which we've used before to set up our min max. Um, if you missed that video, you can go back into the series to learn a bit more about how to set those up. From there, you can click on analytics. And from there, you'll be able to see everything from revenue, profit, ordered items in a super consolidated view where you'll be able to use your date ranges and custom date ranges in order to get a better idea about how items were performing over a period of time. From there, you can use these data points to make specific inventory or pricing decisions in order to reach your business objectives. If you have any questions about this or anything else, I always suggest using the help button at the top corner of the screen. I hope you found this video helpful as you dive into the nitty gritty in your new SellerSnap account. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel. We want to make sure that you get all the content you need in order to get your store up and running. And if you have any ideas for videos that you would like to see to help with your onboarding process, go ahead and drop it in the comments so we can make sure you get all the answers you need. Happy repricing.